What is going on everybody? Welcome back to one of these episodes today. We're having a look at animations using Mechanim and also the rigged sprite we had from previous episode. This video is brought to you by all the nice patrons and also by Pepe because he's the one doing all the outros for a little bit. Hey, can you stop, boy? So heads up going into this, we're using our rig sprite from the last episode. Um, you can find it on the website if you wish. What else did I say here? Oh yeah, uh, you'll also find the awful animation for today. So if you take this sprite... What I'm trying to say is that if you go on the website, take the package right now, you'll find both the rig from last episode, but also the animation from today. So yeah. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel. All right. Welcome back ladies and gents, welcome back to where we left off last time. We left off with a 2D skin and also a, well, there's a rig and a skin behind this little character over here. So if you want to see how we got there, if you want to see how to do that with your own character, go back on the channel, check out the 2D skin um, and rig tutorial, which is basically the one that I'm posting before this one. Okay, so going into this, we're going to need, of course, the character skin with the bones. You can move the bones around. Um, and that's it. That's it. We're going to be playing around with the animator from Unity, so Mechanim in this case. I'd like to remind everybody that you can find the project files over on the website. This time it's going to be the same one as the one from yesterday. So the 2D skin and rig, well, it also includes the, uh, the animation as well. So we're going to call this one 2D character and that's exactly what you can find on the website. So if you want to download these files, go under the download section, look for 2D character. I've also renamed the scene to 2D character. Now what I will do is I will create a new folder in here, call it, um, I don't want to call it scripts, I want to call it animations, yeah, <laughs> that sounds a little bit better. So I'm going to right click on it, create a new animator controller, that's going to be Pepe. Pepe, why? Because that's the name of my character. I will go ahead and drag and drop this on top of my character, so I have my controller that is now Pepe. And from here, the fun begins. So let's go ahead, click on Pepe, click on the controller. You can find it here as well. Double click on it and you will now have the Mechanim window. In here, we will create a nice little schema um, that will contains multiple animations in here. So to go ahead and create those animations, let's think about which one we need first. So when I enter my game and I don't move, I want to be idle. So that's going to be an idle animation. If I move, I'd like to have a walking animation. If I jump, I want to have a running, well, sorry, a jumping animation, uh, and maybe even a falling one if we feel like it. So let's go ahead and start laying those down. How do we do that? We go back in the scene view. We open up a new window. Window is called animation. You can also hit control six on the keyboard to open it. Drag and drop this uh, in the console. I like doing that like this so I can have a nice view while I'm doing it. And now make sure you select the same exact object that has your animator controller on it. So Pepe in this case, um, my character. So on my top level, I have the animator. That's the one I have selected. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new animation. I'll put it under my animation folder and I'll say Pepe underscore idle. And now let's get to animating. So you have all the bones you can play around with. As you can see over here, it's skin, uh, it works. But what's most important uh, before you do all those modifications, make sure you hit record, else it's not going to record, basically. Um, so let's go ahead. What are we going to move in here? What should we be moving in our little idle animation? You know what? I like to move the arms a tiny bit. So I'll take my arms, move it slightly so it records a keyframe. Um, and maybe pull them a little bit inward like so. And I want my animation to last, say, two seconds. So at the two second mark, what I'll do, because I want this to loop perfectly fine, like, um, let me give you an example. If for, say, at one second, I want to move this a little bit higher like that, here's what will happen. So I'm playing my animation. There's going to be a cut, a snap. It's, it doesn't feel good. So what I'm going to do is I take those value, all the values, I will hit Control and C on the keyboard to copy. You can also right click, I believe. Oh, no, you can't right click. Okay, so just go ahead and hit Control C on the keyboard. Move that over to where you want your animation to be done and paste it. Therefore, you'll have this now. So there's like a very small breathing animation going on here. Uh, well, basically, it's just being idle. I can correct my pose if I go exactly on the second. That's where I had the keyframe. I can correct it so it's a little bit less 
obvious. And let's play around with something else. Let's play around with the head bone. So I'll move it a little bit like that. Um, then a little bit like this. And I want to make sure that at the end, I don't have any snap. So I'm copying that single keyframe. So the head keyframe, copy that over here. If you didn't catch it in the last episode, I said I was not the best at animating, rigging or skinning, but I can show you how to make it work. Really hope you appreciate that I bring that to the table. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and create a new animation. To create a new animation, we are going to stay on our top level character, go under here, create a new clip. And in this case, of course, what should we do? We could do walk. And now I'm going to try my best to have a walking animation out of this. All right, so I tried my best. I definitely need some help. Uh, please send help. But that's my walking animation. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop the recording now. I am going to create a new, another one that's going to be a real struggle for me. The jump animation, let's do it. So one thing I forgot about the other one is that I don't have to move the bone rotation-wise all the time. I can also move them up and down. So that would have helped quite a lot with the walking cycle. Uh, we're going to be doing that here, that's for sure. So a jump animation is something that has to be extremely, extremely fast because you want something in the game to be very, very responsive. It's not the case for all the games. Sometimes it takes a bit of time in between you pressing, say, the space bar and then the character going up in the air. But in games like Mario, one, two frames, it's that's it. Like you're already done. So we want to keep that to very, very bare minimum. So I'll be adding my legs over here. Um, let's say I wanted to transform position in this case I also want to have the right leg transform position and I want to take them to a peak very very fast so that could be my peak that could be my jump it looks very very weird we could have a slight little thing like that so a slight offset and see that's that's too that's too slow again um, so I'm gonna be taking this moving them even closer And that's doable, okay. So I'm gonna keep on going and I'll be lifting the arm as well. So here, why not? Before we go and polish this, let's go have a look inside of our engine. So, oh sorry, inside of our state machine. In our state machine, this is what we currently have right now. If you decided to create the walk or the jump animation before the idle, then you're going to have a different default, um, default animation playing. In case that's the case, well, right click on it set as layer default state and now it will enter there mine was fine so i wasn't idle okay and now we have to create conditions so when exactly is it that you're going to be going inside of the jump well you're going to be inside of the jump when you are not grounded so when you're not on the floor okay so here's what we are going to do for jumping we're going to jump on demand. So when we press on spacebar, it is going to jump, assuming that um, we're grounded and that kind of stuff. That's going to be part of the controller logic. But right now, let's assume it's a trigger. So I'll go at the layer up at the top here. I'll press on not a new layer, actually, under parameter, and I'll press on the little plus sign. Choose a trigger, and I'll call it jump. Make sure you don't put any extra special character in it. And then we're going to make sure that at any time, if I have the jump trigger, I'll create a transition from any state to jump, assuming, so this is very important, click on the arrow, assuming that the condition is met. So this condition, condition is now empty. Well, let's click on the plus sign, jump. So if I have the jump trigger, it goes there. Now, um, it should technically revert into, well, nothing right now. So it should stay in the jump state for a while until we hit the floor and then we would have another condition being called so um, assuming we're grounded after that then we go into a idle state so we should actually do that let's have a boolean to know whether or not we're grounded grounded will mean being on the floor now this is also going to be useful say we're walking off a platform we can tell now we're no longer grounded but we never jump so the trigger is not going to be called um, if that's the case I'll go from any states if I'm not grounded to falling and then falling can go back to idle but for now while we're jumping as long as we're jumping and we haven't hit the floor let's just stay in here but if we hit the floor so if we are grounded 
if grounded is true, we go back to being idle. And now, if I'm not idle on the floor, if I'm actually moving, I'll make a transition over to walk. How do we do all of that? Well, um, we could check with a speed value, so in this case a float, and we just check with the character speed. So is the character speed bigger than 1? Let's add this condition. If speed is greater than uh, 0, it means we are going in one of the direction. And if that's the case, go ahead and walk. Now, with this current uh, logic setup, we're going to be stuck under walk. Um, and we cannot jump from walk, so that kind of sucks. Let's go ahead and create a transition from walk to jump. And that's, of course, if we press on the trigger. Now, let's go from walk to idle by saying is our speed value less than say 0.01 so from this point on this is our rough draft we have the rough default value you could say um, to make this work but it's not going to be cool it's not going to be nice looking what I'll do is I'll start uh, bettering this a little bit I'll start by adding a falling animation to our kit so I'll go ahead and do that in a second okay so here's my new falling animation now you're going to notice that there's a big difference in between this one and the jump in the following animation, we can loop it. In the jump, if we're trying to loop the jump, it's going to look very weird. Let's have a look why. Because we're jumping, but we're never resetting our values at the end. And it's chunky, it's clunky, it doesn't look well. There, it, it actually, it was on purpose. <laughs> it is on purpose because we want to stay in that weird state at the end. Um, and we don't want to loop. So that's the only animation we will not loop. And we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so how do we integrate falling into this? Well, a couple of things we could do. If we are walking and we're no longer grounded without jumping, then it means uh, we would be falling. So how do we go ahead and do that? We could create, well, this kind of transition. We could say, if we are no longer grounded, go under the falling state. And I'll put it here at the top. Um, there's also going to be a transition from jump to falling at one point when the vertical velocity of our player will stop going up So when he's done when he reaches peak then after that he's going to start falling. So I will be adding a new field vertical velocity and if that one is smaller than zero so if vertical velocity is less than zero then we're going to get into falling and from falling we're going to stay there until we hit the floor. So let's make a transition from falling to idle. This one is if we are now grounded, let's go back to idle and at that point we'll know whether or not uh, we're going straight to walk. So again, this is not completed. We still have to test it out. We still have to look at it. Um, but we have a very good start. So I quickly went and made a script to test out this animation machine, this animation state machine, you should say. And uh, let's read it really, really quickly. On every single frame, I will be reducing vertical velocity unless I press on spacebar, in which case it's going to go back up to 3. So you can imagine this number is going to be positive for 3 seconds after I press on spacebar. Um, and then after that, it's going to be negative and keeps going down. Also, if I press on spacebar, I'll be setting the jump trigger. Okay, so if I'm pressing on uh, a or D, or the left arrow key, right arrow key, then I get 1, and if I'm not, then I get 0. You could just simply do um, your move vector dot magnitude. If the magnitude of your move vector is bigger than 0, it means you're moving, basically. So uh, it's a weird way to do it, but I've done it here. Then I'm setting in the float. Make sure you input the same exact name as you've put in there in the parameter of the state machine. Vertical velocity is the exact uh, thing we've talked about earlier. And then I'm going to check whether or not I'm grounded with S. So if I'm holding S, it means I am on the floor. Okay, let's go ahead and go through all of these. I will be putting my state machine somewhere down here. So I can have a look at it while I'm playing the game. Alright, so back at it. You're going to see my vertical velocity keeps going down. If I hold the D, then my speed goes back up to 1. And I fall into a weird state. So here's what happened over here. Um, technically, I'm not on the floor, and it knows I'm not on the floor, so it went directly to falling. Now, you're going to notice that it takes a while before we jump into those animations, before all the animations are switched. So if you have a look here, I'll tell you exactly when I press on D. I press now. But we're not walking until the animation is over, and that's a big problem. So we're going to go back on the, on the um, actual state machine, 
and it will make sure to go on the specific arrow that goes from idle to walk and we remove the has exit time. So as soon as the condition is met, we're going to the other animation. I'm going to have to do that with walk to idle as well, with walk to falling as well, with jump to falling. Um, no, this one, I want to give it an exit time. I just don't want the animation to loop. So we'll come back to that. And then jump to idle. What's the condition here? If we're grounded, yep. Let's not wait until we're grounded and the animation is over. Let's simply go to it as soon as the condition is met. What's this one? So idle to falling. Uh, nope. We're not waiting for that. And walking to jump. We're also not waiting for that. So we're not waiting for any of those animation except maybe the jump to falling. All right, let's go back. So I'll be holding down the, um, the S key. So currently I am grounded. So if I go and I move now and I stop moving, move again, stop moving, move again, stop moving. It works just fine. Now, if I'm idle and I drop the grounded key, so we could add a condition over here that says if we're idle and we're not grounded, then we could go over to falling. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to close the game, right click, from idle to falling, make sure we go on it. If grounded is equal to false, we remove the has exit time. So as soon as we play now, we're technically not grounded. So we'll go straight into the falling. We'll press on S to ground ourselves, and it's back on the floor, as you could see. Okay, so if we're idle and we're jumping, hmm, okay, it's getting weird now. Um, well, if we're anywhere really and we're jumping, we are stuck now in the jumping animation and it's quite ugly. It's not, uh, it's not pretty to look at. So how do we fix this exactly? Well, the way we're going to do it is to go directly on the jump animation, the one we've created inside of the project and make sure we remove the loop time. This way, when we jump, we're stuck in that phase for a bit until vertical velocity goes down to, um, zero. So as you can see, press on spacebar, get a velo vertical velocity of uh, three. And then as soon goes by, as time goes by, sorry, we eventually fall down below zero. And then our condition is met to head right into the falling, even if we are grounded. So right now we have a condition that says, okay, so if you're jumping, but you're grounded, then you go back straight to it. And I think that's totally fine. Okay. It looks very weird like that, but in the next episode, we're going to start making this thing move. Actually, in, the, in two episodes from now, we're gonna make it move and you'll see it much better in action. But that's how we go and we've animated this little character, guys. If you have any comment, just put them in the comment section down below. Plus, you receive XP on the website, so that's a plus plus. Um, and I'm reading everything. I'm reading everything. Sometimes I don't reply to all of the comments, but I'm reading everything, that's for sure. Especially now, because I don't have many to reply to. Okay, I think we're done.